What are the five key strategies you can do right now to lower your risk of kidney stones? Welcome back to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And on this channel, we talk all about nutrition and of course, kidney health. With that, let's talk about kidney stones. As you know, kidney stones affect millions of people worldwide. They cause so much pain that some people describe them as worse than childbirth. And when we look at men versus women, men actually have twice the risk of developing kidney stones as women do. But both men and women have about a 50% chance of having another kidney stone after they've had their first one within 10 years. Now, there are four main types of kidney stones that you want to understand before we dive into some strategies. First one is calcium stones. Calcium stones can be thought of as two different varieties. There's calcium oxalate, which is the most common, 70 to 80% of all stones. And then there's calcium phosphate, which is about 15% or so of all stones. Then there are uric acid stones. Uric acid stones shouldn't come as a surprise. We see that in people who have either uric acids that are really high in blood or they're just spilling a lot of uric acid going on in the urine. And these can be seen with patients who have high protein diets going on. There can be genetic factors, but overall, it's about 8% of kidney stones. Number three is struvite stones. These are usually seen with urinary tract infections, tend to be more common in women, and only account for about 1% of all kidney stones. Four and final is cysteine stones. Cysteine stones are very rare. They're caused by a genetic disorder called cystinuria, and it ends up affecting amino acids, cysteine. Only about 1% to 2% of kidney stones tend to be cysteine. So with that out of the way, let's talk about five key strategies that you can work on right now to lower your risk of kidney stone and kidney stone recurrence. Number one, maintain a healthy weight. This is critical because as your weight goes up, there's a higher risk of uric acid going up and we tend to see lower urine pH overall. And both of these things, elevated uric acid, low urine pH, sets you up for kidney stones. So healthy weight is very important. Number two, stay hydrated. Now, when it comes to hydration, water is the best. And by drinking a lot of water, you're constantly having that flow so debris can't stick together. But not all liquids are the same. So if you think about sugar-sweetened beverages, they will actually increase the kidney stone risk and not decrease it. Then if you think about coffee and tea, what's interesting is, is the data show coffee and tea will actually lower the kidney risk. Next one is alcohol. Alcohol is debatable because some studies say it may increase risk. Some say it may decrease risk, but I have always recommended not to drink alcohol. If you drink it, cut back on it, stop it if you can. There's really nothing good about it. Orange juice is really interesting because it has vitamin C. Vitamin C converts to oxalate and we want to keep vitamin C lower. But orange juice is also rich in potassium and citrate and it actually lowers the overall kidney stone risk. In terms of the final one, which is cranberry juice, lots of people talk about it. But when it comes to stone risk, there's no clear link whether it helps or hurts. Next, let's go to diet. For diet, you want to consume more plant-based foods. The more animal-based products you eat, the higher your stone risk. The more plant-based products you eat, the lower your stone risk. Specifically, plant-based products have higher potassium content, which reduces your kidney stone risk. And plant-based products are lower in sodium. Higher sodium will increase the amount of calcium that's spilling in the urine. And when you talk about things like higher animal protein intake, that will also increase the stone risk. Vegetable protein, on the other hand, does not increase the stone risk. Next is when you talk about plant-based diets, plant-based diets are rich in phytates, which basically are things like dark bread, beans, cold cereals, etc. But phytates will lower your kidney stone risk. So overall, if you eat more plants, more fruits and vegetables, your risk for stones will go down. Next, number four, is to make sure that you're getting adequate dietary calcium. This is kind of confusing because we said calcium oxalate were the most common stones. But if you increase your dietary calcium, not supplements, but calcium coming from food, what the data shows is that calcium will bind to oxalate inside your gut, prevent that oxalate from going inside your body through the kidneys. And therefore, by lowering the amount of oxalate, you're reducing the kidney stone risk. So once again, higher dietary calcium can lower kidney stone risk. 
And number five is back on sugar sweetened beverages. Once again, can't stress this enough because higher amounts of sucrose will increase the stone risk. And part of the theory is, is it could be because it leads to higher insulin levels and those higher insulin levels can then cause increased urinary calcium excretion. Now, let's give you a couple of extra tips as a bonus to make sure you're able to apply those. First is you want to aim for urine output that's going to be at least two and a half liters per day to lower the stone risk. So remember, if you want to go for 2.5 liters a day or more of urine, you probably have to drink a little bit more than that. So on the order of three liters of water or liquids per day going. Next is keep in mind that if you have high urine calcium levels, you need to get the blood test done. We do a 24 hour kidney stone panel. But if you do, we have to work up other causes. What could do it? For example, hyper para thyroidism. There can be distal renal tubular acidosis. It may be that you're just absorbing too much calcium directly from the gut going on, or you have way too much breakdown of your bones or you're just spilling in the kidneys because of kidney defects. High urine calcium, specifically greater than 100 milligrams per day, will increase the risk of kidney stones and we need to work up why. Same thing with urine oxalate levels that are greater than about 25 milligrams per day. Those will also increase it. For oxalate, remember, a low oxalate diet helps. But more important than a low oxalate diet is to make sure that you're getting plenty of dietary calcium going on and that can help. And if you have any kind of malabsorption syndromes going on, for example, Crohn's, or you'd have bowel resection, or you've had bariatric surgery, all of those things will increase the risk for kidney stones because of the fact that they will increase oxalate absorption and raise urine oxalate levels. Then there's citrate. Citrate in the urine is awesome. High citrate foods, lemons, limes, oranges going, they will go ahead and prevent stones formation by having citrate in the urine. We'll do a couple of things. One, it will bind with calcium. So you'll get calcium citrate and therefore you can't get calcium oxalate. So citrate will bind to calcium. That's number one. Number two is, is that citrate will actually also help in terms of inhibiting crystal formation. So one is the binding part, two is inhibiting the crystal formation and high animal protein diets will reduce the amount of citrate that goes through your kidneys. Then the last pearl to just remember is a high urine pH favors more of a calcium phosphate stone formation versus a low urine pH will actually favor more of a calcium oxalate type picture. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the five key things you want to focus on. Once again, to summarize, healthy weight, stay well hydrated, drinking about three liters, eat more plant-based foods, get adequate dietary calcium and limit sugar. Thanks so much for checking out this episode, guys. If you have questions, drop those in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.